Cigarette smoking has been declared one of the biggest health hazards of our time to the extent that many countries, including South Africa, have banned it in public places. The cigarette manufacturers around the world have, however, been targeting poorer communities in mostly developing nations. They've also introduced alternative products such as e-cigarettes and vaping, which are increasingly found to be having the same devastating effects as smoking itself. Award-winning American director Aaron Bieber has produced a documentary called A Billion Lives. And Aaron, welcome. Yes, which you. exposes the dangers of these alternatives. And the movie features South African doctor Dylan Human, who is former advisor to the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And Dylan, welcome. Thank you. Now, Aaron and Dylan are here to tell us more about the horrors of smoking and the making of this documentary. A pleasure to have you with us. Let me start with you, Dr. Human. Give me a sense. You know, I'm just, I've just said it's one of the, the devastating uh, health hazards of our time, tobacco smoking. Um, but I do not have the full appreciation of the extent of this problem. You right. worked even at the level of the United Nations, so you had a global picture of the effect. Tell me more, please. Well, Tim, of the 7 billion people on Earth, about 1.4 billion people smoke cigarettes. And what is interesting is that about 70% of them are discordant, which means that they really like to stop. But only about 30% of those actually try and quit. And a very small percentage, less than 2%, actually succeed. Now the dilemma with smoking is that one out of every two users will meet a premature death because of tobacco-related disease. And the cost of the disease, which is tobacco-related, is a tragedy, especially in low and medium countries. Mm. So we know that by 2030, WHO predicts that almost 80% of smoking of cigarettes will be in low and middle-income countries. So it means that the poor people are targeted. But here's the thing that many people have had the statistics, and now you've you know, given us a, a bigger picture of the situation, is that to, to, tobacco manufacturing continues. The marketing of cigarettes continues anyway. Yes. And in some places, it's even advertised and so forth. It's, why is it not banned then if it's uh, causing so much devastation? I think the best way to answer this is to say is that governments are addicted to the fiscal revenue brought on by cigarettes. The smokers of cigarettes, it's the best delivery system of the nicotine and the tobacco products and part of the ritual. So you have a system globally which is basically addicted to cigarettes. Well, well, but this is probably one of the most addictive drugs available in the world Correct. at this time, isn't it? Correct, yes. And we've had declarations of war on drugs. How come cigarettes are not declared as such? Well, we've had a, a war on tobacco over decades, which has been culminated in the, world, uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization's so-called Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. Now, this will, over time, help smokers to quit if the governments play along and if everybody uh, works along to make sure that people are helped to quit or at least switch. What this movie does is it helps to show what the exits are. So if this house was on fire, I think there's one exit where there's an alternative form of nicotine delivery which takes away the smoke and the tar that kill people and that will give them an alternative to quit, and if they can't quit, to at least switch to something less harmful. All right, Aaron, and that's where you come in now, right? Yeah, yep. Dr. Human spoke about exit. There you make your entrance now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, I mean, there's a lot, they, of, yeah. lot of misinformation about what some of these exits are. You see in Sweden, they came up with this thing called snus. It was a pasteurized tobacco product. Um, in Sweden, um, they utilize this, but in the rest of Europe, they, in a lot of Europe, they banned that. And now you see that Sweden actually has about half the cancer rates of the rest of Europe. Um, why were they banning that? You know, he talked a little bit about, you know, some of the addictions to the money that's involved with it. Um, here now, there's this vapor technology that was come out with, you know, e-cigarettes mm. and, you know, some of those different devices. And a lot of people, because it looks like smoking, people actually assume that it's the same risk of smoking. And when you look at the, the funding situations that are going there, um, it's very easy to convince people, even though with this vapor technology, all they do is they take a liquid that has nicotine in it and they vaporize it mm. versus lighting anything on fire. Mm. Nothing is lit on fire, there's no tobacco mm. in it. And I think um, that's one of the main reasons why 
a lot of doctors and the Royal College of Physicians in the UK just came out saying that this is at least 95% uh, safer than cigarettes, yet uh, that truth isn't really getting out there. And is it true though, because the, you know, I've read articles which question the whole thing. I know that there's a, uh, there are arguments, debates here in South Africa at the moment regarding e-cigarettes saying they should not. People claim, well, there's no smoke anywhere at uh, uh, public establishments and therefore people should be allowed to use them wherever they want. But the argument is that they have the same effect as uh, cigarette smoking. Right, which is just absolutely not true. And I know that's confusing because some of these people are really respected leaders, but one of the things you have to look at with a lot of this stuff is the funding sources. Like, where are they getting, are, where, where are they getting their money from? And a lot of conflicts of interest are being created by funding from big pharmaceutical companies who sell Nicorette gum or nicotine gum patches and other medicines that doctors are prescribing. These people are selling billions of dollars of that kind of stuff. Like he said, only 2% of people are actually successful in quitting. Mm. Um, so it's actually a system that keeps perpetuating itself. People keep trying to quit. Um, in the meantime, they're getting sick, they're dying, they're getting cancer, COPD, all of that kind of stuff. And that's a lot of sales and that's... Um, Let, let's take a step back. You tell me about your interest in this matter to the extent that you produced the documentary. How did the whole concept idea come together for you? Well, like he said, a billion people, um, well, more than a billion people are smoking right now. The United Nations World Health Organization actually predicted that a billion people will die from smoking this century. But rarely do you hear anyone talking about some of these things and clarifying some of the situation. Like you said, you have people here in South Africa that are saying that this is the same effect as smoking, that using vapor technology, which doesn't light anything on fire, is the same as a cigarette, which lights on fire and creates 4,000 chemicals that go on. Um, it's just, it's not true at all. And yet we're seeing all this new evidence coming out that's saying this is much better than cigarettes, much safer, it's saving lives. And it's not coming out. So we say, if a billion people are dying from it, and there's people that are tell not telling the truth about it, it's time for some. It's time for a movie about that because potentially this could be one of the worst situations where, where people are dying for no good well, reason. Well, ex explain. The, I mean, you've spoken to a lot of people, right? Doing your yes. research, and they're featured in the in the documentary. So, what what have you uncovered that is com that confuses up to now? And you are talking about a solution. At the same time, you know, when somebody talks e-cigarettes and says solution, can right. you say, can you use the two concepts in one sentence, really? Well, uh, you know, absolutely, it is definitely a solution because, um, like, like we're saying, they haven't proven. I mean, I, maybe Dilan would be the one to talk about that as far as the health situation. Um, there are absolutely, there's no evidence whatsoever that this is causing anywhere near as much problems. Uh, nicotine itself is often a misunderstood. Um, molecule where uh, it's a lot like it's a lot of the medical researchers are saying it's a lot like caffeine mm. now that doesn't sound so bad does it mm. you know and so here people are been taught their whole life to fear nicotine because it's what makes people want to smoke but what ultimately is happening is people are smoking for the nicotine and they're dying from the nicotine um, and or they're dying from <laughs> no that's not true they smoke for the nicotine but they're dying from the tar. Well, here's a solution, you know, much like some of these other smokeless alternatives, that they can have that without dying from, you know, lung cancer so or So the, the approach you take in the documentary then is to say, I suppose, that to for those who smoke already and want to quit and are battling, there is an alternative. Ultimately, that's the point that's been made well, here. That's the whole point, and that there's a lot of corruption that goes along with that because uh, governments are addicted to the money. Um, some of the NGOs that are against smoking come out and they say they're against vaping, vaping or e-cigarettes. Well, why are they doing that if that, if, if using an e-cigarette is safer and helps people quit smoking? Why aren't they, why are they still saying that we don't know and that this is dangerous? Why are they doing that? That's the question everyone needs to be sure, asking. Sure. And it comes down to, a lot of cases, it comes down to money. Now, Dr. Human, you know, medically speaking, can you briefly explain how this assists in for those people who want to quit smoking? Absolutely. Uh, Tim, and just for our own country's sake, uh, we have about 9 million people who smoke cigarettes. Out of the 55 million, about 9 million, about 17% of South Africans uh, smoke cigarettes. And as I said, maybe 70% of them would like to quit but can't. Mm. So this is a, a type of product which is especially suited to those people who have tried to quit 
and who've not been able to do so. Mm. But who know that they feel bad, their lungs, their heart, their general health is really being severely impacted. Uh, and this to me is the uniqueness of the movie, is it gives the individual a voice. Mm. It's not about you waiting for a thousand people to die before you do something. Mm. This is about somebody you, in your family, your brother, your sister, your child, who might be a smoker and who's looking for answers. Now, I can guarantee that if somebody who smokes cigarettes, if they were to switch to an e-cigarette of repute with good product standards, I'm not talking something bought off the streets, but something with good product standards, that if they give it a try for at least two to three weeks, the first thing that they will find is that they can suddenly breathe better, they smell better, they taste their food. And I've seen that with uh, uh, patients of mine and uh, patients converted to, to vaping, that after about a month, it's very difficult for them to go back. Some of them do what we call deal use, that they vape, but they also take the occasional cigarette. Mm. But in general, you get a phenomenon which is extremely important to communicate to the individual smokers out there, is the possibility of harm reversal. Mm -hmm. If you continue to smoke, your chances are one out of two smokers, you will have an earlier death. Your chances are 100% that along the way you will have tobacco-related disease. So this is a way for an individual who chooses to smoke or to vape to get away from smoking okay. and to help save their own health. Uh, so I would, I would suggest this to all of my colleagues, health professional colleagues in South Africa, all of my patients without any reservation, that in comparison with smoking cigarettes, this is the way to save your life and also the quality of life. You don't want to get to the end of your life as a smoker and spend the last 10, 20 years of your life as a, as a cripple mm. in terms of your lungs. Well, I suppose, you know, for more understanding and uh, appreciation for this argument, then you've got to see the documentary A Billion Lives uh, that is produced by Aaron Bieber. Thank you very much. And Dr. Dylan Human, who knows about these things, also saying he agrees with the argument that's been made in the movie that vaping and e-cigarettes are better alternatives to smoking and can actually reverse the effect of uh, cigarette smoking. And we hope you found this discussion very interesting. We'd like to hear feedback from you. Write to us. The address, the email is tonight at mudise.tv or talk to us via Twitter at Tim Mudise.